Hello, I'm State Representative Wes Rutherford from the 51st House District. Welcome to Ohio in Focus. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Brad Miller. Today I'm talking with State Representative Wes Rutherford, who serves the 51st House District, which includes portions of Butler County, including the cities of Hamilton and Fairfield, Ross Township, and portions of Fairfield, Hanover, and St. Clair Townships. Representative, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So this is your first time on the program. Why don't we start by you giving us a brief background of uh, you leading up to being elected to the Ohio House? Well, I um, born and raised in my uh, in my home county, Butler County, uh, just outside of Hamilton. Graduated from Tallawanda, which is in Oxford, where Miami University is. And uh, after high school, I joined the United States Marine Corps and uh, was medically retired from there. And after that, came home and uh, did a few odds and ends jobs and uh, wound up at working at a funeral home. Um, where I'm a mortician's assistant and uh, I'm responsible for a variety of activities uh, from everywhere from the family services uh, to doing the removals. Uh, I do a lot of property maintenance. It's a really cool 115 year old building that I work on. So I, I do that and plus I do a little bit of property maintenance for a couple other businesses and rental properties on the side as well. Um, I've always been really active in politics, uh, always real involved with government, what's going on ever since uh, junior high, even sometimes in elementary, and that kind of stems from, uh, from with my, being with my grandfather who uh, was always very big into history and, and civics and stuff like that. So yeah, that kind of got me into where I'm at. And, you know, I worked on a lot of campaigns and kind of had the opportunity to uh, give it a go for the state house. Uh, and so I, I took that opportunity and, and Thankfully, the uh, people of the 51st District were kind enough to choose me to represent them for the next couple of years. So you're about five or six months into your first term so far, very busy five or six months. Um, what has the experience been like so far? It's, it's been a very good experience. Um, I, I was very fortunate. I had uh, replaced Representative Courtney Combs, and Courtney was very good about uh, making sure that I got up here uh, with him, you know, a couple dozen times, got around meeting people, uh, got to see some of the inside stuff, sit in on meetings, watch committees. So I, I kind of had a feel for what was going on without actually being involved in what's going on. So that kind of helped me out. I, you know, I, I was able to at least um, test the waters before I even, before I even got up here. And I think that kind of gave me a little bit of a head start for someone who's fairly new to what's going on. So you're part of the uh, Butler County delegation, uh, as well as with uh, representatives Margaret Condit and uh, Tim Derrickson. What's it like being part of that delegation, working with them? You know, it's a uh, it's a blessing to have uh, two great colleagues, and really, honestly, uh, also um, now with the redistricting, we actually have Pete Beck, who covers part of uh, of Middletown and Butler County as well. So we really have four people, and. Um, between the four of us, we're able to to cover for each other. Um, you know, we we help out each other. We don't we don't see each other as uh, just representing our districts only, but representing all of Butler County, working together for what's best for Butler County because Butler County is a very close, tight knit community. All the other communities in Butler County feed off of each other, and and so it's very important that we work together. and And I think that we can get a lot more accomplished. We can we can cover a lot more events and activities when we work together. You know, if if um, Representative Condit uh, has is double scheduled and needs to present an award somewhere, you know, then I can step in and help her out. And same thing with me and, and with with uh, Representative Derrickson. So, um, but not only that, but you know, the people of Butler County know that not only can they go to whoever their specific rep is, but they can go to all three of her, all four of us, and and uh, get their voices heard through all four of us as opposed to just one of us. You mentioned uh, <clears throat> your service in the Marine Corps. At the beginning of this year, you were um, asked to uh, serve on the House Military and Veterans Affairs Committee. What was uh, 
What was that like? What does it mean to you, considering your military background, to be asked to serve on that committee? Well, I, I was very honored uh, to be able to serve on that committee. Um, you know, I would have been happy with whatever committee that uh, Speaker Batchelder felt that it had been appropriate for me to be on. But for me to be on that committee, something that's near and dear to my heart, uh, working on veterans' issues and um, working for the men and women that have fought for us and gave us our freedoms and rights. Um, you know, not just me, but you know, I, my brother, he's also a disabled Marine. Uh, you know, I have grandfathers, uncles. I mean, I come from a long military family. So, I mean, it was very important to me to be able to be involved in that and make sure that these men and women, when they return home, have a, have, you know, a, a loud and uh, forceful advocate for their causes and needs. Um, and on top of that, I also, you know, not only did, was I honored to get to serve on the Military and Veteran Affairs Committee, but I was also elected by my colleagues to be the uh, vice chairman of the Veterans Affairs Caucus, or Veterans Caucus for the, uh, for the House as well, the bipartisan caucus. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the uh, pieces of legislation that you're working on most directly. One of them ties in perfectly with military issues, um, dealing with um, helping military veterans find employment uh, upon returning home. Before we get into the bill specifically, can you talk about some of the challenges or some of the biggest challenges that uh, veterans face upon returning home? Well, obviously the, some of the biggest challenges they have returning home is um, is finding employment. And, th and that's a challenge for everybody, but for veterans it's, it's, very, it's very important that they're able to get back into a structure. Um, when you're in the military, there's a structure. There's, you know, you got to be here at such and such time and there at such and such time and you know that structured life and it helps transitioning back into the civilian life if you can go back into the same kind of structure that you would have with a with a regular well-paying job um, obviously the other problems is you, the the disabilities the injuries that they and sometimes the and a lot of times the mental injuries and with the mental injuries the the biggest problem is once again making sure they can get back in that structure because a lot of times the the ones that are less severe will the, they don't pop up until they're sitting at home not doing anything and that's when that's when the PTSD starts kicking in for the the less severe cases so if they can if they can stay working and stay active and stay involved and stay structured it, it kind of helps prevent those I those from popping up, those problems from popping up. And you're seeing it now with, uh, with Vietnam veterans who are retiring and now they're sitting at home and they're retired and they're not really doing anything and now now those those uh, flashbacks are and the shakes are kicking back in because they don't have that structured life that they had with a regular job. So uh, what are some of the specific uh, provisions in House Bill 98 that address these issues? Well, one of the biggest things is in the state of Ohio, there's roughly 66 trade licenses um, for trade skills such as HVAC technician, uh, electrician, CDL licenses. Uh, 47 of those have a direct corresponding job in the military. In the state of Ohio, you know, and most of them take three to five years of experience and training before you can take the licensing exam. Well, the state of Ohio doesn't never recognize the um, the training and the experience that you got in the military on those trades. So the biggest thing that House Bill 98 does is when you get home, you get done with your four-year stint, and you um, after boot camp, you did three and a half years working and training as an electrician. Um, then you can come home and you can say, well, here's what I did in the, in the military. I was an electrician working for three, did three and a half years. They would look at that and based on their rules could accept that and you'd be immediately eligible for taking the exam or you might only have to take a couple months of training as opposed to a whole four full years altogether again, all over again. So it gets these guys where they can get their license right away and, and you know, these trade, these trade jobs are well-paying jobs. It's just exactly what they're looking for and exactly what they need, exactly what our economy needs. Um, <clears throat> another bill you're working on uh, deals with an issue that has been on the forefront of America's attention for going on four to five years now, and that's the federal health care law. You are uh, co-sponsoring House Bill 91, uh, which is known as the Health Care Freedom Act. What can you tell us about this bill? Well, the Health Care Freedom Act, um, which was introduced by Representatives Young and Thompson, I was very happy to work on that. Um, 
you know, we need to we need to do something about what the Affordable Care Act is going to do. The CBO's um, the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office said, you know, it's going to cost us up to 800,000 jobs, 2.6 trillion dollars in federal spending, and some of the biggest things that this is going to do is it limits the payment of credits or subsidies to uh, insurance companies. So that way, you know, we're not taking these, we're not going to take this federal money. We're going to stop that. And what it did was the sponsors believe that if they found a legal loophole in, in the Affordable Care Act, that's actually going to allow them to do this. So the biggest thing is what we're doing is we're saying, you know, it's not that we don't want to provide good health coverage and affordable health coverage in the state of Ohio. It's just that we need to do it on our terms and without spending China's money on it. Um, and finally, uh, House Bill 99 addresses um, the uh, seizure and registration for firearms. Uh, what's this bill about? <coughs> well, House Bill 99, it's, it's also known as the, the Wyoming bill. Um, and it's been passed by several other states in, in various versions. And what it does is it effectively makes it illegal in the state of Ohio to enforce new gun bans or registrations. Um, the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution is very clear. It's the only amendment in the Constitution that says shall not be infringed. And some, for some reason, our uh, leaders in Washington don't follow that. They think that they can slowly snip or snip away. And some of the, the proposals and regulations that they're, that they're proposing and that we're trying to fight against, they don't affect the criminals. They don't affect the bad guys that are going to get the guns and use them. They're affecting only the law-abiding citizens that do the right thing. So what we said is, look, once again, we know, what's, we know better what's for Ohio than what the leaders in Washington do. So we're going to say, you know, you back off. We're not enforcing your laws. In fact, it's illegal to enforce your new laws. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on common sense solutions here in Ohio that's actually going to work here in Ohio and keeping guns out of criminals hands, but allowing the law-abiding citizens that want to exercise their Second Amendment rights to keep their guns. I understand there have been some third parties that have raised some uh, legal questions and concerns about this bill. What are your responses to uh, those concerns? Well, one of the biggest arguments that's, that's made and it's always made is, made is the Supremacy Clause. But people always forget that the Supremacy Clause only applies when a federal law is passed is actually constitutional. And quite frankly, any law that passes or any executive order that is signed that restricts the Second Amendment is going to be has to be unconstitutional. It like once again, it says it's the only one that says shall not be infringed. So that's that, that's the biggest thing is, is we're fighting unconstitutional laws. We're not fighting constitutionally written federal laws. We're fighting unconstitutional ones, which is what you know, that's the oath that we took. Um, we have about a minute left. Uh, what are the easiest ways um, for your constituents to reach out to you and contact you? Well, my office has three ways for my constituents to reach out and, and contact me. They can email me at rep51 at ohiohouse.gov. Um, they can also reach, uh, reach me at my phone number, which is 614-644-6721. Or I have a Facebook page, State Representative Wes Rutherford, and me and my staff monitor that as well. And between those three things, if you want to get a hold of me, those are the best ways. And we're really good about getting back to you with a, with a quick answer. Or if you have a problem, we're pretty good about uh, uh, getting to, getting, trying to get it resolved for you or getting you to the proper authorities that can help you with your problem. And we have that information uh, listed at the bottom of the screen. Representative, thanks for taking time to sit down with us today. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you again on the next edition of Ohio in Focus, the program that brings state government to you. Thanks for watching.